Alright, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And once again, I'm coming at you from the 2014 Woodstock Food Festival. You guys should have been here. It's a great time. You guys are probably watching this after the event is over. They are having it again in 2015, so be sure to check the link at the end of this video if you want to sign up for 2015. It's going to be a huge party and a lot of fun. In any case, we're here with Dr. Samuel Mikarski today. And actually, Dr. Sam gave a number of presentations here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Well, so the talk Dr. Sam gave was the most underrated nutrient and overabused supplement. Yes, right? that's it. And I'm curious, like, what is this? I, I need to be doing this so I'm not abusing it, but I don't want to get too much because people need it. What is it, Dr. Sam? <laughs> it's, it's actually exercise. Now, some people would think, oh, it's caffeine, and, and, uh, but no, it's not. That is overabused, though, and uh, something we don't consume here. <laughs> But it, it's actually exercise. I, you really see like two extremes with exercise. You have what I call movement deficiency syndrome, uh, and that's where people just sit on their butt all day and do nothing. <laughs> and then you have uh, MES, which is movement excess syndrome. That's where they're truly hooked on exercise, like a drug. And they almost get uh, really obsessed when they talk about exercise. I have to go to the gym. It's a red flag to me as a clinician. And I know what they mean to say, but at the same time, if they're that attached to it, but they're really using it to as a stimulant more than a nutrient. Exercise is truly a nutrient, especially for your joints. Now the rest of your body as well, but especially for your joints. And I don't think people appreciate that like they should. And the quality of, of how you move is just as important as the quantity of how you move. I can't stress that enough. Everybody's obsessed with quantity and, and getting uh, how much can they bench, how much can they squat, how many burpees can they do in a minute. And I'm really concerned with how well you can move because in order to feel well, you have to move well. Otherwise, exercise becomes injurious to your body, which means it injures you. People go, oh good, you're supposed to break down muscle tissue before you build it up. And, and people have been brainwashed with that mentality. And it's like, there's some truth to that. However, exercise is not supposed to hurt and burn and beat you up to the point where you're like, oh, I can't move the next day. Exercise it should enhance your life. It should add to, not take from your body. And does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I went on a walk the other day. I went uh, like 7.7 .7 miles, just a nice long walk in the nice Texas summer heat. And I mean, I could, I could have kept walking forever. I mean, just it's exercise is so easy. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It could be something you love to do. I mean, I get a lot of my exercise through gardening. So Dr. Sam, are there any kind of exercises that you would recommend to people out there that they might want to try and start with? I, well, I agree with you on gardening. I call it enviro-size. And when enviro-size is a term I made, it means it benefits you and the environment. And I, it blows me away that people sit inside all day doing their work, the job that they're in, and then they'll go to the gym, go to another place that's indoors, and expose themselves to more electromagnetic equipment and just fluorescent lights and just, there's, it doesn't build health. And so go outside and do something you like and learn to play as opposed to work out. If you don't know what to do, go to a playground and just watch kids for about 20 minutes. You'll have all the ideas that you ever need. Uh, but I think gardening, John, I agree with you, is one of the best exercises because you get all the other elements that, that we talked about in another video that we did. You know, there's sunshine and fresh air and you're growing your own food. And you get this connection with spirit, and gardening is amazing. I used to think, oh, that's for old people. And that's boring <laughs> as hell. And I got to tell you, when I started growing my own food several years ago, my whole life changed because you start to realize it's not even about food anymore. It's about so much more, but that's a whole other talk. But, but it's such great, it, it really is great exercise. You get a lot of various movement patterns when you garden uh, correctly, especially. You're bending, you're squatting, you're twisting, you're pushing, you're pulling. That's human function right there. Bend, squat, push, pull, twist, stand on one leg, balance, you know, lean forward, almost like a single leg remaining deadlift, and pick the tomato and stand back up. <laughs> and you have to do it that way or else you're going to crush your, your other plants, uh, depending on how you planted your rows. And John's an expert in that, so watch his <laughs> thousand other videos on gardening, and that, you probably won't need to play an uh, obstacle course in your garden. And again, nature has her way, and she just puts things sometimes uh, where she's going to put them. But I think gardening's great, but other than that, walking, like you just said, walking is such a simple thing. And when your body starts to talk to you, take a walk. I have a saying, when your body starts to talk, take a walk, move. But walking's wonderful. It, it, we are built to be biped creatures. We can do other movements on all fours, but uh, we're built to be upright and biped. And walking is so therapeutic. If people would just get up and walk uh, in the morning, and then again at night, a half mile to a mile, they'd be surprised at how much 
better they feel, weight they lose, how much more fit and tone their body gets. It seems so similar. Like, oh, it can't be that easy. It really is because you have to understand something. If your exercise is so high intense all the time that you're stimulating this fight or flight response, which is also called the sympathetic response or adrenal overload, which happens so often with exercise, you're actually shifting your body's hormone profile and physiology in a direction that you actually may gain weight. It'll backfire on you. So you want to keep your exercise at a level that that is uh, doable for the most part. Now I'm not saying don't get any intensity, but you just can't do that all the time. And because of the high stimulation world we live in, people are addicted to stimulation. And exercise has just become just another stimulatory tool for people as opposed to a nourishing uh, process every day that the body is supposed to have. Wow. I mean, I totally agree. You shouldn't like go extreme with exercise and not do any. I like to get consistent and regular exercise is one of the things I like to do. So Dr. Sam, you know, I know many of you guys out there might be thinking, well, how much exercise do I do? Right. You do enough. You know, <laughs> that's one of those, uh, that, that answer enough and it depends. And that really is the correct answer. Either one is the correct answer. It's enough exercise, just like enough sleep, enough sun, enough water, enough food. Your body will tell you. And, and you can get to a point where you become so in touch with your body that you hit that stop sign long before you're ever going to get injured. See, what happens is with sometimes with people in their exercise, they're very out of touch and they're not present when they're exercising. They're, they're listening to music, uh, the earbuds in, and they're doing 100. They're not truly present. When you're truly present, your body will give you clear, distinct signals just like it will when you're supposed to stop eating. I know that's a challenge for a lot of people. <laughs> you'll know when to stop. It's no longer appealing anymore. So that's how you'll know. You'll be playing for a while and all of a sudden, I don't want to do this anymore. Now, some people say, well, you got to push a little bit. Yes, again, that's where the depends answer comes in. If you're training for something, you might have to push a little bit, or you're an unmoded individual. Yes, you may have to push a little bit, but you should not push, grind, no pain, no gain mentality all the time because it'll get you in big trouble. So enough exercise is really the answer. I know there's general guidelines by the American Council, you know, science councils of exercise and fitness councils out there about you know, at least three or four days a week of moderate-based uh, exercise and for 30 to 40 minutes or whatever. That's fine. I, I'm not against that recommendation. If you need numbers, fine. Three to four times a week for at least a half hour to an hour of moderate-based uh, level intensive exercise. And to me, that would mean a brisk walk. You know, it's about a moderate level for most people. Wow. All right. Well, great. So, Dr. Sam, is there any other exercise tips or tricks that you want to share with my viewers? Uh... Exercise tips and tricks, I, I would say... Again, it really comes down to uh, form. But another thing that I will leave your people with, and this is this is really, really important, because again, based on a culture that's become perverted, just like other things, like food is a perversion, exercise is a perversion, train movements, not muscles. I can't tell you people come to me, well, what am I doing? I'm training my you know, chest, back, tries, and legs, delts, buys. I said, well, what about the muscles in your eyes? What about the muscles in your feet? What about your tongue? That's an important, strong muscle to buy. You're gonna neglect all those. So it's almost like prejudice. Like I can say, you're a, you're a muscle racist, in a, in a sense, because you know, train muscles. The body doesn't know muscles, it knows movement patterns. So learn to move functionally, bend, squat, lunge, twist, push, pull, you know, and uh, locomotion skills, rolling and, and hopping and running and walking. Now, we kind of mentioned that earlier in the video, but yeah, it's really important to train movements, not muscles, to focus on quality before quantity, and of course, the golden rule of exercise, safety. Okay, safety. If the risks far outweigh the benefits, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay, so you ask yourself a few simple questions because people see something that somebody does and go, oh, that looks so cool, I want to try it. First question is, when have I done anything like that remotely close to that, you know, in the last five years or in the last 30 days? If someone's making something look really easy, it's probably really hard. They've just mastered it and it's taken them a long time to get there. So you want to be very, very, uh, conscious of safety when you exercise. Really know what your limits are. I think people, a lot of people are very out of touch with what their true capabilities are and they overestimate what they can and can't do. Take things very slow and progress slowly and wisely. Uh, exercise is like other spiritual endeavors in life. Learn to enjoy the journey. You know, learn to enjoy the journey because you're going to go, oh, I can do 10 chin-ups now, now I want to do 20. Yeah, and you missed it. You missed the whole journey of getting to the 10 chin-ups. Enjoy the journey and, and it'll, it'll just have so much more essence in your life. You'll, you'll truly learn to enjoy and appreciate exercise just like you do food, water, uh, exercise, fresh air, uh, excuse me, fresh air, or any other nutrient that should be in your life. Wow. 
I mean, definitely agree. Exercise is definitely important. Many people exercise so that they could feel good, but there's a lot more things that you should be doing to feel good. And in Dr. Sam's book here, Feel Good Now, he shares exercise plus seven other things you should be doing to feel great, have the best health, and uh, it, it's just totally awesome. So uh, if somebody wants to buy your book, Dr. Sam, how can somebody uh, get this book and learn more? Sure, it's available on Amazon and, and some other uh, big book distributors like Barnes & Noble, but most people end up getting it on Amazon. Uh, I have an official book website, but it's just going to send you back to Amazon, so you might as well go <laughs> there to buy it. It's available in hard copy form as well as the Kindle uh, digital format and it's also in the Kindle match program which means if you buy the hard copy form you can get the Kindle book for just an additional two ninety nine. I think Amazon's got on sale right now for about 13 bucks. Wow. I mean it'll be trust me it'll be one of the best, best investments in your health in a long time and uh, it will return dividends like you can't imagine trust me if you read the book and you actually apply apply what's in there uh, you'll 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 come out ahead because there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom and I talk about this in the book knowledge is knowing and wisdom is doing Wow. Yeah, super important. I mean, the other thing I want to say about the book here, I mean, it's literally a scant 70 pages, and it's actually nice large print. I haven't re uh, read too many books since college, but this would definitely be an easy read. And the other thing in this book, at the end of every chapter, there's links, actually, to further online videos and articles to even provide you with more information than th what's in this simple book. This simple book is basically all the dispelled information that you've always wanted to learn to start feeling good now and increase your performance about you know and doing some of the things that dr sam talks about so uh i hope you guys really enjoyed this episode check out his book amazon.com and uh hope you guys enjoyed this episode once again my name is john kohler coming at you from the 2014 woodstock food festival we'll see you next time and remember until then keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables they're always the best Okraw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you and where I'm at, I'm currently traveling here in Southern California. I'm going to be attending the 2015 Natural Products Expo West. And stay tuned and subscribe for my next video on the Natural Products Expo 